You're very welcome back to the football show. So I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Mark Herrick, who is a former Cork City and Go United midfielder, but now here in a very different guise. We're going to talk about heading because it's something that's quite topical at the moment with regards to CTE, which we've spoken about recently. Players who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s now suffering from dementia and whether there's a link with heading. And you're very involved in this with a company called Headright Sports, which is a frame specifically designed to improve the timing of heading. Absolutely, yeah. So um, we, we designed a, a training aid, Nathan, that was to improve players' technique at heading footballs. And um, fantastic, it's an age-old training methodology, suspending a football from something and uh, jumping up and getting your timing right. But um, as we were developing this training aid, there was, the controversies were starting to be co come to the fore mm. regarding repetitive heading and the association with long-term damage. So then... You know, um, logic would tell you that if, if a lighter ball travelling at lower speeds would, and you'd practice with that, it would have lower impacts. But in order to um, support that, we had to get academic support to, to say, look, this is a safer way of practising heading also. Although you do get better, you know, but it's also a safer way, which is fitting into a very kind of controversial and topical space. So we might get into the frame and how it works and what it looks like and what the benefits are, but... Why did you want to get into this? What sparked your interest in how people head the ball and how you can improve how people head the ball? Um, I guess as a, as a youngster, I, I come from a footballing background. My, my, my father was an ex Irish international and um, um, as a young 15-year-old in, in 1988, I, uh, Ray Houghton scored that great goal that summer, that header. And I put a football in a pillowcase and I hung up from my washing line at home. I haven't seen footage of Pele do something you know, right. on, in the 1970s. So I run back and forward and, and jump up and head the ball. And, and before long, my timing had improved. I went back playing my club, Ren Moore. And um, I was actually quite strong in the air. I was, I was confident. I was winning balls. I was scoring goals. And, bef and not long after that, I went over to, to Peterborough United as a young 16-year-old. And it, was a, it stood to me uh, as a part of my game throughout my, my playing in England, uh, in Scotland, and in Ireland that I was, I was very good in the air. So um, coming back then, I was involved with Mervyn United in the League of Ireland, and Johnny Glynn was our manager, and I wanted our lads to be good in the air. So I created this frame where we had adults running back and forth, heading footballs in pillowcases, and they loved it, and they improved. So then a, a good friend of mine, Damien O'Rourke, suggested that, that we, it's something that could, we could take further and bring it out to a wider audience. So we started to pursue uh, bringing this to... Um, to uh, commercialise the whole, the whole uh, product. It, it looks like quite a fancy contraption now, I'll describe it in a minute, but could you not have just stuck with the pillowcases and the football inside? Yeah, I think... Um, brand them up, a Manchester United one, a Liverpool one, a Chelsea one. Yeah, that would, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? That would be <laughs> kind of cool, you know. But uh, no, we've, we, it's been taking so long to uh, develop the product through different iterations of it, you know. But um, yeah... So, the, go, going back yeah. then and to seeing Pele yeah. hanging a ball up and yeah. jumping and yeah. trying to improve his timing and then you're at home in Galway and you have the ball inside the pillowcase. Yeah. Why do you think that improved your heading? Um, I, I think the most important headers in match day are the ones where players are airborne when you're jumping. The, the, it's the competitive area to get to the ball first. So with that, most players, from our research and from looking at this, and just from knowing the game, most players are out of their depth when they're there. So when you're jumping, they're uncomfortable. So, so with that, I know when I practice this way, and jumping and putting the ball up a little bit higher, and it's moving, and trying to get your timing right. And um, I knew then that you know, the, the benefits were, were quite, quite astounding from it. So um, with that, you know, and you're saying, why hasn't this been done before? There are crude ways of doing this. And, and some of your listeners and, and many people we know will have tried something like this. Mm. But we wanted something that's easily erected without tools, safe to erect, and it works. Yeah, it's interesting because heading is such a vital part of the game, particularly for centre-backs, yet aside from the ball being thrown up and yeah. headed as far as you possibly can, it's not something you overly think about. And it does feel as though it's something that you either have or you don't from a very young age. You're either somebody who is a good header of the ball, and I don't, that, I don't know if that's a technique when you're actually making contact, or it's an awareness of space and timing and jumping. Like, What's, what's the science behind the players who are, even the guys out there now, who would you look at and think is are the best headers well, of the ball? Well, when you think of an awful lot of the tall guys aren't great in the air, mm. but it's the fact that they never needed to jump. So even when they were taller as young lads... Peter Crouch. Yeah, you know, so he, he may not have had to jump much, but he's good in the air because he's, been, he's getting practice in matches over and over since he's a young lad. So often the good guys start getting better, and the other guys... So the range in ability kind of spreads, you know? So um, 
But like they, there was Tim Cahill, remember he played with Everton, mm. that lad, he's just fantastic in the air, great timing. And this is part of our primary research. We went around and interviewed so many people to do with heading, and so many people said, yeah, it's about timing, isn't it, heading? Now, there are other factors. Of course, bravery comes into it. Bravery is often rewarded in heading. But it's our contention that even players, uh, the, the margins in football are so small that even players who aren't good at the skill will be exposed at some stage in their career. It could cost them a World Cup, it could cost them a, a premiership title by missing a header. And I know of some several cases in more recent years where top professionals who aren't good in the air because it wasn't just something, as you alluded to there a minute ago, by saying that they weren't really good in the air and that's it, it's parked. But it's something that can be improved upon. Quite simply, with... Uh, we believe this training methodology. So when you were sitting down and you were going from the basic ball inside a pillowcase mm. to trying to create something a bit more fancy, yeah. something that you could bring around and, yeah. and sell to clubs yeah. and sell to players, what, what were the key things you were looking to find out about? Is it about timing? Is it about power? What, what are the key factors in head right sports that you were looking to really delve a bit deeper into? Well, uh, you know, timing was one. And we, in order, when we started developing this, and I was being supported by Enterprise Ireland, they said, well, okay, Mark, I wanted to show the world we've got a great product. And they said, well, how do you know your jump improves? And then we had to go, okay, do I have to prove this? So we, we used accelerometers to measure vertical jump over a training period. And one of the first exercises we did, we threw balls, looped balls, kind of traditional training exercise, loop balls to, to players, and we asked them to head them back at its highest point. And, in, and they all headed it, and we measured the vertical jump. And then what happened is we, uh, um, we used an accelerometer on the shorts, and we measured the vertical jump using our training aid. And in all cases, they jumped higher using our training aid. So we had the vertical jump was improving. And then with the support of NUIG, Dr. Michael Newell, we developed what we felt was an algorithm for head-eye coordination. Now, I don't want to bore people with the science or you with the science here, but we really did have to delve into this in order to have the due diligence that when we do get and stand in front of a high-profile client, that we can back it up with the science to say, look, this works. Mm. So with that, our algorithm for head-eye coordination, as opposed to head-hand, head-foot, which we're more familiar with, had to be developed. And that was with the sports, science, sports scientist, Dr. Michael Newell in, in NUIG. And then we finally worked with UCD to say, OK, using a foam football, because it's about timing, using a foam po football, particularly with underage players, it reduces the impact and the subconcussive blows, that which are related to CT and long-term damage. So that's where you're really going to come to the fore, I think, over the next few years. Because while this started out as a technique in trying to improve mm -hmm. people as footballers, it's also coming at a time where there's so much talk about CTE and there's more and more research being done into it and more and more research being done about concussion and I think particularly in the NFL where we think about concussion we always thought about the big hits, the ones they slow down yeah. where there's a clash of the heads whereas actually a lot of the research has shown that CTE yes. is those small quick fire collisions but repetitive again yes. and again and again which is what heading is and particularly what heading practice is that yes. when we're 14 years of age the ball is thrown up 20 yeah. times headed as hard as you can. So, was that always in your thinking? You talk about the foam yeah, ball there. Yeah. So, obviously, it's a softer blow when yeah. you're going up to head the ball. Or was that something that actually came a bit later? It came a bit later. But one of the things that w became more evident was, as we were doing this, uh, like as you said there, Alan Shearer in the documentary, mm. Dementia, Football and Me, says that for every goal he scored, he practiced a thousand times in training. Chris Nickel in the same documentary, um, you know, and looks like he, you know, he has dementia, um, spoke about the repetitive heading that he conducted over his career, particularly in training. And training seems to be the issue. So what we did is we said, now kids often now don't play as they used to. You know, I, I think you're a bit younger than me, but, but we played on the street. I don't know, did you do uh, mm. as well? But, you know, we'd use a goal, a, a garage or a shed or something as a goal. We played headers and volley, volleys for ages with a plastic ball. And, you know, that doesn't really happen as much anymore. So therefore, it's up to the club to be able to bring players up to a certain level of competency because they just haven't headed the ball much. So it's not a skill that can be ignored. So how do you bring your, you know, make children adequate at the skill that they're not endangering themselves, their opponent, and they're proficient to, to give them the com competitive edge over, over uh, opposition? You mentioned all the various universities you've yeah. been working with uh, doing the research and from even a technical point of view. But from the CTE side of things, have you started to look into that, the sort of benefits or is it still too early in terms of, because it's, it's mostly players in their 60s, 70s, 80s that we're only now starting yeah. to really hear about. Is it, is it that depth of research that you can tell actually if we were to use this instead of a regular football yeah. over a 10, 12 year training period, 
that you're going to have a better quality of life? Um, so with all the, the, the studies that have con been conducted today at Purdue University, Stirling University, Swansea University, um, and now currently the header programme, which is overseen by Dr. Willie Stewart, he featured in the Alan Shearer documentary. Um, and that's a collaborative effort between the FA and the PFA to look at the, a larger sample to see is there a definitive link between heading footballs and long-term damage. But when you look at last year's study, which was overseen by uh, Dr. Don Williams in Swansea University, mm. where he was monitoring 13 players over a decade who had dementia, 13 retired players who had dementia. And then with six of them, the autopsies on six of the dementia retired soccer players, four had CT. So therefore, you know, right there, I know it's a very small sample. You're saying 66% of retired soccer players with dementia show the pathology of CTE, which is quite alarming. But that doesn't stand up when you're up against, you know, groundbreaking kind of rule changes or something that might ensue from UEFA or the FA when you need a larger sample. And that's what, the, what drove the current study that's mm. taking place with Glasgow University. We're probably in this sort of strange limbo at the moment when it comes to football and CTE because nobody wants to admit it because of the potential legal ramifications Absolutely. that could come down the track. Yeah. So therefore, I guess, from your point of view, it's difficult to get clubs to come on board with this because that in itself is some sort of tacit acknowledgement that, yeah, there may be an issue here. Yeah, so we've, we're, we're in a delicate space where we're saying, listen, look, ultimately, you, this improves your timing and you get better and there's lower impacts. And, and it, it probably would be you know, wise of us then just to, to leave it at that. But you know, we've delved into the, the you know, contentious space of the concussion player safety. And um, thankfully, we have you know, clients like Go United, like uh, um, Douglas Hall in Cork and Owen Moore Murray in Galway, and are all very supportive of our efforts. And there's, no one has said they've only been complimentary of them for endorsing such a, an effort that puts players first. You know? um, so with that, and we've, we're doing these seminars now about, about heading and, and we're introducing, we're talking about the skill um, around Ireland. And no one's stopping us. UEFA know we're doing this. Mm. So, so for a private company to be going out to the field, to be educating and talking about the skill and where it's at and where the research is at, and UEFA know we're doing this, is, you know, the, in a sense, uh, there's some validation in that too. How long has the company been going? We've been going for two years now. Two years, yeah. Okay, so, so and we're, we're, only, we're only on the market now, you know, so which is, it's great, yeah. Yeah, uh, and have you noticed, even in those two years, that there is becoming a greater interest, maybe a greater interest than you'd imagine, because of all the controversy around it, that actually, yeah, some clubs are thinking maybe we do need to head down this route? Yeah, you know, I think, I think that, you know, definitely there, there is a greater interest um, in this, and, um, yeah, so, so, so there is something, something happening with this, and it's only getting more pronounced. You know, what's happening in America with the restrictions that they implemented in underage f soccer for heading footballs. You know, there is an element here when we were doing all our research that people were saying, um, yeah, but that's, America is a bit different and, and they would be overly cautious. But, you know, it is something that will, will end up here. In some way, there will be protocols mm. around heading, at what age it's introduced, how often it's practiced, and this is where we're kind of suggesting the guidelines for heading. So in America, there's a complete ban from children under 11 heading the ball. Yeah. Then from under 14, it's between 11 and 14 heading the ball 20 times a week in 30 minutes of heading practice a week, which from an Irish point of view, you just say it just seems incredible because yeah. that would be one average training session. Do you work, and maybe this wouldn't be ideal for, yeah. for your company, that we're heading towards a place, what seemed unimaginable at the yes. time, that football would not yeah. have a place for heading in it, that in a decade's time we may actually be looking at a situation where if some legal cases start arising, where simply heading the ball would be outlawed? I, 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 don't, think it'll ever, I don't think it'll ever happen. You know, uh, it'll be an informed choice, I believe, but it may affect the numbers and participants you know, playing, playing soccer or football. Um, you know, I do believe that there will be some form of restrictions, that numbers of practice and numbers of uh, frequency of, of mm. usage. And um, the problems with American you know, uh, protocols is that now you're starting to see players, young players, kick balls out for corners, knowing that it's not an advantage to the opposition. Then you've got feet going up where maybe they shouldn't be because p players can't use their heads. So it's not a ban like that, you know, has its problems as well. So we're saying that it's a skill that has to be practiced in order to get better, to avoid the collisions. But yet, how do you practice without the heavy head impact? And we're saying we do it, you know, with fewer repetitions 
in a kind of a, a managed way and, and our training aid of course fits into the system and, and that's what we're kind of about. So the actual training aid then to describe it it's sort of like I'm going to say the basketball net and the pole yeah, behind yeah, it hanging up yeah. and then a sort of hanging basket which is the football that swings around and you so do you change the height of that? Yeah, good description, Nathan. Yeah, uh, no, you're yeah, looking at me going. I know, not, not th- yeah, I know but we spent I, two years yeah. working on this, and you've just described can, it like a imagine, hanging basket. I can imagine your viewers going, "What exactly is this now?" And I probably won't be able to describe it well. But no, it's a, it's a freestanding frame that's mobile, easy to erect in one minute without tools, okay. and it's got two footballs hanging off it that we can adjust the height of it. So it's recreating in a sophisticated, more scientific way the clothesline with a pillowcase, as we mentioned earlier. If the FAI decide that they're going to follow their American counterparts and they say under 11s, under 14s, no longer allowed head the ball. Would this pass it? Would this mean that you're still able to use this for a younger I, age? I, I have no idea. I, I, I don't think, you know, whatever restrictions they put in, you know, will have to be, you know, it'll, it'll take some time. But I don't think it'll be an FAI. It might come from UEFA. Right. But uh, with that, you know, the protocols, what we're pushing for is that there would be guidelines around it. And, um, you know, the FAI are also aware of what we're doing as well. So that's, you know, so at least we're not um, being mavericks here and, and uh, trying to do something that upsets everyone. Although we are probably drawing more attention to the way this is being practiced and how contentious an issue it is. Yeah, I think it's a great idea uh, with the way the football is going. So for anyone who's listening and anybody who's out there in a club and thinks actually, yeah, we are concerned about this or we actually just want our players to get better. We, we have a bit of money to spend on some equipment. Are you in a position that you can go out and offer this up to clubs? Are you still in the infancy as a company and, and you need some of the bigger contracts first and then you can roll it out across the country? Um, no, we can, we're, that's what we're, we're hosting these seminars over the summer and our first one is in Galway on the 10th of uh, June where we're, we're talking about the skill, we're talking about its, its place in the game and um, some of the contentious issues with it, but we're also showcasing our product. And with that, because it's, it's probably you know, best an export product, but we want you know, our own clubs, our own uh, region to, to have it. So we're making it more available for, for clubs in Ireland. And there'll be another event in Munster, Leinster and Ulster over the summer and we're inviting clubs to come and see, see what we're doing, you know. So that's aimed at, at coaches at the clubs coming yeah, on. And, absolutely. And, and, and see what they think. And, research. Yeah, and, and talk to them and, and ask them what they're doing currently with that and are their players good in the air and, and, and just have a very uh, interactive kind of discussion but we'll do a presentation on the day and a demonstration. Who's the one guy you look at when you're giving this and say you want your players to head the ball like him yeah I think uh, we, were, we were chatting about that I, I mentioned Tim Cahill was excellent yeah. remember there was a guy Carl Heinz uh, Riedler at mm-hmm. Liverpool he was superb in the air for, and I'm kind of uh, mentioning guys who weren't that tall you know they were they were great and, and Lord rest him Gary Speed was an excellent header header of the ball you know so um, yeah Virgil van Dijk Virgil van Dijk, yeah, yeah, spin yeah, the ball yeah, when it's yeah, coming along. He just yeah, stands there, doesn't yeah. barely need to jump, just spins yeah, it out. Yeah, to the no, he is superb. And, and isn't that this is one that came up recently enough when I when I was speaking to Premiership clubs, and they said, well, we want to practice getting the ball back on the ground, so it's a cushioned header. So whatever about you know we talk about attacking headers, defensive headers, it's taking the pace off a ball and being mm. able to redirect it to someone's feet because they don't want the ball being in the air. So so no matter what, even as the people are saying, yeah, we keep the ball on the ground. There will always be a place for heading in the game. Well, it's, and maybe there's a lot of good quality centre backs out there who do it. It's just I've noticed Van Dyke on four or five occasions during games this season where it's just a long ball hoop forward where generally you would see a Premier League centre back even just yeah, get up yeah. and head it back yeah. and hopefully it'll land on one of the midfielders' chests. Just spin it out to the, yeah, to the feet yeah, of the full back. Yeah. And you start again. And I, I, you know, I don't doubt that this has been discussed. You know, that, that they want the ball on the ground. You know, these great players with great ability. So it does take even players, small players, tall players, to have the ability to, to control a header. You know, so, um, yeah, and he is, no, he's, he's pretty outstanding. Are you a Liverpool fan, Nathan? Are you, no? I, I, I'm completely uh, unbiased in these things, as, okay. as the listeners will well know. I just okay. take a special interest in Virgil van Dijk from time to time. Okay. And Lovren, was it Lovren got that assist the other day too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a header too, you know. But not only that, I think it was the, the centre half, the Varane, mm. who, who fli- for that goal, because I'm watching this like, relentlessly, but, um, you know, he, he got up and, and knocked one out for a corner by just grazing off the top of his head. So we have all these discussions, you head it with your forehead. You know, there, there are match day headers that come off all parts of your head and, and this is about timing, you know. So uh, with that, you know, we're kind of trying to, to accommodate you know, the, this technique in so many forms. Mark, thanks a million for coming up and joining us in studio. 
headrightsports.com is yeah. the website if anybody wants to check it out and actually see what it looks like okay. rather than my and our Facebook terrible page description well, you know. of it. Are your fa- what's your Facebook page? Uh, Headright Sports as well. Headright yeah. Sports and yeah. details will be up there as well, I'm sure, of the seminars. The one in Absolutely. Galway. Yeah, Galway on the 10th of June, yeah. So Great. it's so we have an Eventbrite kind of a messaging there to say if, you, if you'd like to come along, you know. So a lot of clubs have signed up for it already, which is great, you know. Great stuff, Mark. So, brilliant. Thanks, Nathan, thanks very much. We'll take a quick break.